if you don't mind, I'd like to offer you something that might give a little bit of encouragement to you. Look at that, a little bit of confidence as you walk through this life that we're in as believers. It's tough out there, and sometimes as a, as a believer, you've got these different things coming at you. Some things that may cause any doubt, and sometimes even concern as to whether you are saved enough to make it. Let me give you a passage that we cover sometimes, and we don't really flesh out what it really means, what, is, what it all is entailed in here. And this is this passage in Revelation 3, 5, where we talk about someone may or may not being blotted out, which, by the way, the scriptures are clear, no one can be blotted out. And speaking of certain people who can't be blotted out, and I want to show you some of that part that we don't typically cover, but let's go to it. He says in Revelation 3, 5, that he who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments, and I will not erase or blot out his name from the book of life. Now, a couple of things. Remember, he's not saying that there's a possibility. He's literally saying that I will not. And he used emphatic uh, negation, which is that I will never, ever, ever blot out or erase that person's name. So we can't come back and say, well, there's a possibility. If he can, if he says we'll never blot it out, that means it can be blotted out. It says the total opposite of that. But I want to focus on something so that you can know that you are the person whose name will not be blotted out. That is indeed, if you are an actual believer, look what it says. He says, he who overcomes. And so this word for overcomes is Nikon. Now, someone said, well, see, you have to overcome in order to make sure that your name is not blotted out. But notice what he says. Doesn't say that you have to overcome. He says that this is what you are. You are, and notice the tense of it. This is in the, the present active participle, meaning that you are overcoming. This is who you are. This is what you do. You are categorized or identified as someone who is overcoming. Where do we get this from? Why do we even have this, this terminology about someone who's an overcoming? How do you become an overcoming, an overcomer? Well, let's go to John. Let's see what John has to say on the matter. In 1 John 5, 4, he says, for whatever is born of God, that obviously that's who, overcomes the world. And there's that word in the Greek in, in Revelation, it was Nikon, same word, but in this case, it is the word for Nikai, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So what causes us uh, to overcome the world? Our faith. Our faith in what? Obviously, our faith in Christ. But notice what it says, verse 5, he says, who is or who is the one who overcomes the world? Notice the tense over here again. It is Nikon the one who is overcoming. Again, it's a present active participle. This is someone who is overcoming. That person that we've already discovered, John says in Revelation, that person that's overcoming will never have to worry about their name being blotted out. Of course, no one's name ever will be, but that's something different. But the person that's overcoming, that's the one whose name will not be blotted out. Let's continue. Who is the overcoming one or the one who's overcoming the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. Notice the tense here. It is the hapistuan, the ones that's believing. It's the same uh, tense of the verb that's used in John 3.16. So if you are believing, ask yourself a question. Are you a believer? Have you been born of the spirit? Are you, as we say, born again? If you are, the Bible says that you're overcoming. He says, who is the one that's overcome, but the one who is believing that Jesus is the son of God. Now, how do we know that this is someone who is born again, who believes? Let's go back to the first part of 1 John 5. Look what it says. Whoever believes, this is the pasha pistuan, this is the same verbiage that's used in John 3, 16, the, the believing ones, whoever that believing one is, that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. And this word, this tense for, for the word born is in the perfect middle indicative. Now, let me explain this real quick. The perfect tense is a completed action in the past. It's a past completed action, meaning that it was done. And in this case, it's in the middle. It was done to you. Well, who did that? Well, that's obviously from God. We know that the person who was born of God, we find out in John 3, same John who's speaking of this, when Jesus says that you must be born of the spirit, not born of your own accord, as John says, not born of will of flesh. Uh, or blood, but of the will of God. And then he says, just as the wind blows where it wants to, you don't know where it's going or where it's, where it's going, where it's coming from. So is everyone who is born of the spirit, born of God, born again. 